Um, Joe's unnamed, is it working? Yep. What'd you do different? <laughs> now, I tried and turned on the overhead the other day, and it wouldn't go on, and John went on and went on. I tried turning this on, and it wouldn't go on, and Jamie touches and goes on. <laughs> I know how you feel. Not holding your mouth right, not, uh, it's, 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 it's probably my magnetic personality. I was going to say, uh, Joe's unnamed child uh, provided a, a lead-in for our, our lesson tonight. And, um, as, and as, as Joey also mentioned, uh, Jerry's at, uh, in Limeg. Uh, doing uh, work talking for one of their, their summer series. I've got some handouts. Uh, Bud, you want to grab some of those? Charlie? Thanks. But we'll do, we'll do a little bit of brainstorming too. Obedience. What does it mean and how important is it? Well, I'm sorry? Yep. You didn't look at you didn't even got the notes yet, so it, obedience being better than sacrifice. Significance of that goes back, of course, to the law of Moses. And the people got to thinking the rituals they went through were more important than anything else that they could do in their lives. Matter of fact, that was God's complaint against the people during Malachi's time, that they were, they were keeping all the feasts, they weren't going into idolatry again, but they really didn't have their hearts uh, into what they were doing. And he says, look, your sacrifices are wasted on me. I need your obedience. I need you to, to apply the, the, the principles I gave you more than I need you to go through and, and at the right time uh, hold the Passover feasts and all these things. This is, that's, that's just your, your misunderstanding um, what's important. What else about obedience? God requires it. How come Adam and Eve ended up having to leave the garden in Eden? Because they weren't obedient. Now, in order to be obedient, there's something you need. And um, Charlie goes. It's an excellent teacher. I beg pardon. It's an excellent teacher. It's a, it's a good teacher, as as Joe is trying to do with his unnamed child. She has a name. We're just not allowed to say it out loud. That's. Um. If you want to obey something, what do you need to know first? What that something is. You need, you need to hear or understand what's being required of you. Now, in our country, there's a statement, I don't think it's in any legal document such, that ignorance of the law is not an excuse for breaking it. Um, so the answer is you better understand what the law is so you don't break it. It's kind of that way with God. Um, for people to, to, to say, well, that person has never been taught, they don't know these things, 
therefore it's unfair for God to punish them, uh, is a mistake. People need to know. Matter of fact, in Romans chapter 2, it talks about how the Jewish people have the law. Even though they had it, they didn't necessarily follow it. The Gentiles didn't have the law, but they instinctively followed a lot of what the law was. He says that made them a law unto themselves. There's ways to know what's right and wrong. And uh, all of us who have raised kids know that's something that you have to somehow get across to them, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, God does the same thing with us. He tells us these are the things you shouldn't be doing. Don't do them. But oh, by the way, these are things you should be doing. Be doing them. We talk about, uh, the New Testament talks about the sin of omission. Not doing what you know you should be doing uh, is, is, is also a sin, as well as doing those things you know you shouldn't be doing. So obedience has that kind of, uh, of responsibility. What I, um, what I did for the lesson, and of course right away I can't find what I want, Oh, there it is. Everybody familiar with these? It's called a Bible-ready reference for personal workers. It's a little pocket guide. I've used these, I've used one, well, they used to be a different color. They used to be yellow. But I've used one of these for, for decades. And it gives you a whole list here on the front, uh, and on the back too, of topics. And then there's a little black tab that tells you what page that topic is on. And you just go down and it lists scriptures. It doesn't go into a lot of, it, of, of um, explanation. It gives you a little bit of an idea of what that scripture is. Uh, it's, it's got things like attendance, restoration, marriage, salvation, heaven, divorce, on down. Probably a good 20 topics. These are excellent uh, for working with people. Uh, but I also have uh, taught a lot of classes and, and, and prepared a lot of sermons out of this little book. And uh, I used it as an outline for tonight's topic. There it is, obedience. And it lists, it says obedience is necessary. It lists those things, uh, various verses, and I've added some verses uh, to, to flesh that out a little bit. So what I have on the handout <coughs> if there is a verse that's uh, left-hand column aligned, that's from this little book. And the description is in that center column. Uh, like the first one, Matthew 7, 21, must do God's will. And then I've, uh, then I've typed in the, uh, the actual scripture. Uh, then anything that's, that's indented like Psalms 40, verse 8, those are things I think help expand and explain that concept. So this, this idea of obeying God's will is extremely important. It's something that, that goes from Genesis to Revelation. It's everywhere. Um, no matter what covenant you're under, it's what's required. And that included Noah, included all the patriarchs up until um, Moses' time, and then, of course, those on, under, under the law of Moses and then those under the law of Christ. So this is a constant theme throughout the Bible, and I thought maybe we'd look at that a little bit, um, talk about it. Um, Matthew seven twenty one. 21. I, I, I use this verse a lot. Other, others do, too. Because it, it, it's, a, it's a warning. It's a, it's a very strong warning that there's going to be people on the day of judgment who believe in Jesus Christ and who believe they've been serving Christ. It said, we did things in your name we cast out demons, we did all these things, we did all these works in your name, and yet Jesus says, depart from me, I don't know you. 
And he says, because you did not do the will of my father. You went off and did what you wanted to do or what some man told you to do rather than what God told you to do. So it's, it's, it's a strong statement that all of us need to be aware of. We, we, always, we always point this to the denominational world, and that's where it belongs, certainly, that it's not enough to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to understand what God's will is and then do what he asks of you, not what you want to do. And we'll be talking about some of the, the, those, those conflicts between man and God as, as you go down through this. Uh, but it can apply to the church, too. It, it's easy for people to get off on a tangent and start moving towards some of the denominational teachings and some of the practices. Uh, we see it all the time. We, we, we see congregations go, go into apostasy. They start picking up things and doing things because it makes everybody happy, makes them feel good, and the answer is, that's not what God asked you to do. So, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven? Obedience. Uh, and that's extremely important. It's something God requires. Um, and you have to understand his will. It's, it's amazing how many people, and it's not, it's not just in, quote, Christian religions either. I've, I've talked to people of, of, of Jewish faith, and they're just as ignorant of what the, the scriptures say. I'm not talking about New Testament. I'm talking about the Old Testament. They're just as ignorant of what it says as people in the denominations are. They don't study it. Uh, they listen to lessons. They listen to somebody tell them what the Bible says. But they themselves do not study it. And therefore, they fall into the trap of believing someone and not testing what, what they're hearing. Psalm 40, uh, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Thy law is within my heart. Obeying God should be something that we enjoy. It's something that makes us feel good. Um, we should be a very happy people. Uh, Paul writes quite often about the joy that, that, that we should have as Christians. Uh, we're saved. It should, be a, it should make us feel good and delighted that we know that we're saved. And we have confidence that we're doing God's will. And that should be, that should be the goal it's a sub-goal. The main goal, obviously, is to be in heaven one day. That's where we all want to end up. But no matter what, what else we, we have on our plate, um, if, if you don't hit that retirement program, you've got a problem. Um, you want to build up your, your spiritual 401k and keep it, keep it growing and make sure that, uh, that you're going to be in heaven one day Part of that is to make sure that you're doing everything you can now to make that possible and have confidence that you're doing everything you can. Uh, getting confidence is, is, is an important part of our lives, and that's something that, that we all need to, to work on and grow into. Uh, James 1.25, I tried formatting this and it still didn't work. There's something missing in the bottom of that. One who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides in it will be blessed in what he, I'm sure this word is does. Um, that's important. Looking into the law and, um, and abiding by it. Making sure the law of liberty, the law is under Christ. Uh, making sure that we're, we're, we're abiding by it, we're obeying it, we're doing those things we should. In the, in the outline, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Uh, they all have mentioned this. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. They, they didn't do it. Uh, that was one of, the, one of the themes of Isaiah when we studied that. Is the people just, he says, they, they give me lip service, but their hearts are far from me. 
They're just not into wanting to obey God and do his will. And people can rationalize anything. Um, it's, it's easy to, to, to sit back and say, well, I've got enough to make God happy. I've, I've hit the minimum required, so I'm done. And if I'm doing things that are not according to God's will, that's okay because I'm doing all these things that are according to God's will. Uh, a lot of people rationalize a lot of things that way. Uh, I'm doing enough so I should be able to go forward. Uh, obviously, David didn't have that attitude, Psalm 6. Uh, he realized that, it, it, you, you look at, David's an interesting, interesting individual. I, I, I'm puzzled some, a lot of times by him. Um, he knew God loved him. There was no doubt. He loved him greatly. And yet, he'd go off and do these stupid things. Bathsheba, killing her husband. Um, not being a very good father. Uh, a lot of things like that. Um, having multiple wives and concubines. Yet he had the love of God, but he just, he, he constantly needed to be chastised and he needed to, to repent. And uh, God forgave him some pretty, pretty big, you know, items when you think about it. And we say, well, you know, how could he do that? Well, what about Paul? When he was Saul, he was there agreeing to the stoning of, of Stephen. He watched everybody's coats. He didn't throw stones. He was a coat watcher. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of priests walking around. They're gonna, you never know what they're going to pick up and walk off with. So he was watching the coats, making sure they're safe. But he was there giving, giving, giving agreement to, to Stephen being stoned to death. He went to Damascus with the idea of dragging Christians back to Jerusalem to be tried, in, imprisoned, and perhaps even killed for believing in Christ. So in, in that sense, he's a murderer, and yet he was forgiven. So it's, it's, it, God can do that if he sees the value in that person and their ability to do his will and get others to do his will. And that, that's, that's, that's an aspect. So being obedient is important. When you recognize you haven't been obedient, then comes in repentance. That's when you need to be able to, to make that switch. Um, Matthew, Mark uh, 12, 33. This is a, a extending this, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's, a, it's a, uh, another use of the uh, first and second greatest commandments. To love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as himself is much more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. Understanding God's will, understanding the, his commandments, and doing them is much more important than all the other things you can do. All, all the works you do, all the, all the activity you do in the church, those are great. Don't get me wrong. But if you do that and don't do God's will otherwise, then it's a waste. And that's, that's, the, that's the, the message to the denominational world. There are great things done by the denominations. Most of our hospitals in the St. Louis area were founded by some denominational group. Most of them don't have any connection anymore with that. But if you look around, Missouri Baptist is named Missouri Baptist for a reason. Barnes Jewish Christian Hospital is named Barnes Jewish Christian for, for a reason. Um, where we came in Chicago, there was Methodist Hospital. A lot of hospitals were established through, uh, through denominations. Uh, a lot of universities have been established through denominations. Most of the major universities in this country no longer have any religious affiliation. Most of them have gone completely humanist. 
and they would deny their, 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 um, their founders and the founding principles. Uh, but they were. So good works have been done by those people. But Jesus would say, you didn't do the will of my Father. You didn't obey the plan of salvation. You changed it. You, most of them deride the concept that you have to be baptized by, in, by, by immersion to be saved. Uh, that's God's plan, and you're choosing not to follow it. So all these great works, all these great things you've done, Jesus says, it's cost you your soul. Because you didn't do God's will. More important to do those things, to love the larger God, as it says in, in Mark 12, with all the heart, with all the understanding, other things we talk about, mind and soul, and with all your strength. Understanding. Now, that, that's an interesting uh, uh, change there from love the larger God with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul. We need to understand what God wants us to do. And when we do that and we follow it, that's when we love God. And we'll have, it, we have some of those verses down here a little bit later on. Basis for obedience, Acts 5.29. We must obey God and not man. Uh, that is a, a problem we have in the religious world. Peter and the apostle said we must obey God rather than man. That's when they had been uh, arrested for preaching about Jesus Christ and salvation. And they were charged that we're going to let you go, but you've got to stop doing that. We don't want you going back into the temple and preaching Jesus Christ. And they said, we can't do that. God has told us we need to do this. Jesus gave us the great commission to do this. We need to do it, and we're going to do that rather than listening to you. And they went back and, and right into uh, doing their preaching again. Uh, Romans 16, 6, 17. Uh, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed. The Bible is the inspired word of God. We have the teaching of Jesus Christ there. We have the teaching of the Holy Spirit through the various apostles and other inspired writers. We need to follow that. And when we deviate from that, when we begin to change it, when we begin to sift through it and say, okay, I like this part, I don't like that part. Um, I, have, uh, I have someone I know who is of um, Jewish background, but, it's, but believes in Christ. He doesn't like Paul. So anything Paul's written, he discounts. That's an awful lot of the New Testament. He discounts Hebrews, and I try to tell him that Paul didn't write Hebrews. I know a lot of people say he did. I'll be glad to discuss that with you. We don't know who wrote Hebrews. I'm pretty confident it wasn't Paul, based on internal evidence in Hebrews. But he, you know, that's in their mind. I don't like it. I don't. As other people have said, I don't like Paul. He's a chauvinist. And, uh, you know, he's against women. You'll hear that kind of statement around some people's mouths. Uh, in this case, the guy is, feels like Paul's a traitor to the Jewish people. And so his teaching is, is, uh, is not good. It's the inspired word of God. Paul's just telling us what God wants us to know. And you can't just throw away big chunks of the Bible. If you do that, then forget about all the things they tell you about Jesus Christ. The only real source of evidence, proof of Jesus Christ as the Son of God is this book. That's where the, that's where the eyewitness accounts are. Uh, that's where the inspired information is that gives us the confidence that he really was the Son of God. So if you start throwing things out of this book and saying, well, that, I don't want that, I don't want that, then why do you accept the stuff about Jesus Christ? It's just as much able to be thrown away as anything. 
So it's amazing how people do that. They want to be selective. They want to do, do a lot of things. Matter of fact, I'm trying to remember the... Becky's not here tonight. She mentioned something one time in class that there was a denominational preacher who said the Church of Christ really understands the Bible and takes it in its totality. But they're just wrong on baptism. Uh, you'll hear those type of things. People will be selective, whether it's based upon a personal feeling or something they've been taught. Um, the, the doctrine of men get in there one way or the other. Um, so there is a form of teaching that we need to hold to. Uh, there is an obedience of faith, Romans 16, 25 through 26. The preaching of Jesus Christ and my gospel according to my commandments of the eternal whatever. God. What can I tell you? Um, hmm? I'm sure he's in there. Um, it, says later, it says in Romans 1, 5, Paul, we have received grace. Paul said, we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among the, all the Gentiles for his name's sake, among whom you're also to be called of Jesus Christ, are the called of Jesus Christ. Let me look at Romans 16. Helps to have the Bible right side up. Otherwise, you feel like you're reading in tongues. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret for long ages of uh, past, but now is manifested and by the scripture of the, of the prophets according to the commandments of the eternal God has been made known to all the nations leading to obedience of faith. There is the faith. There is the faith that God has established for us. We need to be obedient to it. And we get that through the scriptures. Teachings of Christ, teaching of Paul, going back even look at the, at the prophets of old. So much of what we see in the New Testament, uh, you can tie right back to various prophets from the, from the Old Testament. Uh, it's, it's amazing if you go through the Sermon on the Mount and look at the cross references uh, to Jesus' teaching there, an awful lot of what he presented that day chapters 5 through 7 of Matthew have already, been, have already been said. People just never put it all together. People never really understood what it meant. That's why people said you, you, you teach with authority. He was taking the word of God, he was taking the scriptures from the prophets and stuff and he was making them real. He was making them able to be applied. And in order to be a God, that's what it has to become for us. Obeying others. There are some things in obedience that we need to be doing. Um, every parent loves us. One, Ephesians 6, 1. We're to obey, the children are to obey their parents in the Lord. And that's specific. Uh, if parents are asking the children to do something that's not according to God's will, there's a, there's a conflict there. And as the children get older, they need to make decisions on their own that this is not right. But they're supposed to obey their parents. They're supposed to respect them. Uh, you're supposed to, um, and the one I got in here is with Jesus. Remember when he went in, they went to uh, Passover, uh, celebrated in Jerusalem, and uh, Jesus and his parents were part of a big caravan going there together, and they left. And at the end of the day, where is he? We thought he was with his cousins in the back of the caravan someplace. He's not here. So they turn around, run back to Jerusalem, they find him there. I've got a lesson where I say this is, this, this is one example of don't kill your child for disappearing. There may be, there may be hope yet. Uh, they, had to give, they had to give Mary and Joseph heart failure they can't find their son. But one of the things that came out of that is that uh, it says he went down with them, 
going down from Jerusalem. It's a, it's a physical going down there in the hill country, even though they're heading north back to um, Nazareth. And he continued in subjection to them. He understood he needed to obey his parents and make sure he doesn't put them in that position again. Brett understands that. His parents have beat that into him, so he understands that fully. And I'm sure that all of our children understand that type of thing. Um, be subject to, uh, to the authorities. Uh, remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to, to be obedient. And of course, relative to the elders, obey your leaders and submit to them, Hebrews 13, 17. Um, we've got a few more minutes. As normal, I, I don't go through the whole thing, but you'll have this to take back with you. There is reward for being obedient. It's not just um, obedience and what, what, what's next type of thing. There, there are things that come out of that. And, uh, and Paul talks about that. He talks about how so many people were doubting the resurrection. And he says, look, there is a resurrection. If you say there's not, then Jesus wasn't resurrected. We're not going to be resurrected. And he says, then we ought to stop doing what we're doing. He says, if there's no reward of resurrection to life, he says, we better be enjoying what we're doing now. And we ought to just eat, drink, and be merry. Now, a lot of people say, well, I, I, I would obey God regardless. The Bible says the promise of a resurrection is important. It gives us a goal. It gives us something, gives us a desire to want to achieve and, and get that. Same thing true with our children. We, we reward them when they do things well. We punish them when they don't. And they need to understand that there is benefit out of doing the things that you need to be done. Um, Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3, 22. Hebrews 5, 8 through 9. Although he, had, he was a son, this is about Jesus, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered and having been made perfect, he came, became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. And John three thirty six, He who believes in the son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Belief in Jesus includes obedience. It's amazing, 316 sits there, and everybody focuses on that. Oh, you gotta believe, you gotta believe, you gotta believe. Start at the beginning of the chapter. Read verse um, John 3, 5 through 7. Read John 3, what does that say, 30... 36. They're all part of that same passage. It's amazing how sometimes you can refute uh, false doctrine within the context of the very verse they use for their basis for the false doctrine. Obedience is part of believing in Jesus Christ. If you don't obey, then you really don't believe in him. It's lip service as, as God, God uh, uh, told the people through Isaiah. Um, Revelation 2.10, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. There is a reward, um, and that's, that comes from, from obedience. Disobedience will be punished. Just as, as there's a reward for being obedient, there is punishment for, for being disobedient. That's the justice of God. He's a just God. He, he, he's given us fair warning. It's not like he's just dropping us and saying, oh, by the way, uh, I didn't tell you, but this is what you should have been doing. And it's tough, but you're going, you're going to hell anyway. The message is there. The word of God is there. It's our responsibility to get that word out to as many people as we can. People need to make a conscious decision on whether they're going to hell or not, rather than have it be a default situation. And there will be, there will be uh, 
that. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9. If you don't obey the gospel, you'll be lost. Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction. Can't get any more clear than that. You obey the gospel, you go to heaven. You don't obey the gospel, you go to hell. And it's not oblivion. We're talking about eternal punishment. And that's, that's, a lot of people don't seem to understand that. Again, that's that carrot and stick approach to things and, and telling people about the gospel. John 3, 36, again, the same verse. Believing in, believing in Christ requires obedience. Um, and if you don't obey God, then the wrath of God will be upon you. Romans 2.8, uh, to those who are selfishly ambitious and do not obey the truth, but obey right, uh, right, unrighteousness, wrath, and indignation, God is rendering man according to his deeds. We have to understand what, what uh, is required of us. Leviticus uh, 26.18, if also after these things you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times for your sins. That's God talking to the people of Israel. These are his select people, people that he loves greatly. He just pulled them out of Egypt. And he says, you keep messing up. He says, I'm going to punish you seven times. If that doesn't, let me get your attention. I'm going to punish you seven times for what you've done. And it didn't work. Uh, the rest of the, of the section here are just examples uh, of, of of those who obeyed and some who don't obey and what happens. Um, I got, still got Noah, we just had a uh, VBS on that. Abraham, of course, uh, Genesis 26, 5, Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws. Wait a minute. Moses came a lot later. And yet here's Abraham obeying God's statutes and his laws. So those are, are known to people by instinct and nothing else. Uh, the people of, of, um, of uh, Exodus, in Exodus, the people there, they said, we're going to do everything God wants us to. We're, Moses, we're there. We're ready to go. They didn't do it. They pledged that several times. They pledged it at the end of Joshua, the book of Joshua. The same pledge was made. We'll do all that God commands. And they didn't. Um, and of course, the ones then in the Exodus, they, they, millions died in the 40 years they wandered in, in the wilderness. Uh, Judges 7, I always think of Gideon. Who takes, who goes into, into battle, has 32,000 soldiers, and because God tells him to, he gets rid of all but 300. That's what Gideon did. There was a much larger Midian army. They had hundreds of thousands of soldiers. He managed to get 32,000 together. God says, you don't need 32,000 men. Got them down to 300. They won the battle because they obeyed God and, and listened to him. And then one I think is interesting, Acts 6, uh, 7. Sometimes we skip over these things. The word of God kept on spreading, and a great many of the priests were become obedient to the faith. We're right back to obedience, we're right back to the faith. A lot of the priests listened, listened to the teaching of the apostles, and decided to follow Jesus. We always talk about all those who didn't, but there was there was there were quite a few that did. That's the lesson for tonight. Uh, sorry for the formatting problems. I don't care how often I look at that before I print it, it just doesn't quite come out right. And if you want a, a better copy, I will, I will correct those, those problems and uh, have it available if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to order some of these books, and uh, if you'd like to have one, let me know. They're excellent. Uh, if you want to look at it, I'll be glad to leave it here. You can, you can look it over. But it's just got, it's got, like I say, 20 different topics, and it gives you 
some cases as many as, uh, as 15, 20 verses dealing with that topic. And uh, that's, that's an excellent, excellent uh, reference. Go ahead and close with a word of prayer and then we'll, we'll depart. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much for this evening we have to study your word. We certainly enjoyed uh, hearing uh, more about the, 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 uh, from the book of Psalms and hearing from Psalm 6 and Joe's message. And we pray that uh, as we go through and we study various scriptures, we'll come to understand how those apply. And it's important for us to be able to do that, for we know that we need to be obedient. In order to be obedient, we need to understand. Knowledge is important. Uh, we can have zeal, but if it's, not, if it's not consistent with knowledge, then it's wasted. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us all. We thank you for that uh, Kay is doing so well, and we hope that uh, Sue will, will continue to heal and get better. There's so many others that need your healing hand, and they're on our prayer list, and we certainly think of them and, and, uh, and have them in our, our hearts all the time. We thank you for being with us in all that we do. We thank you for being with our families. Uh, we know that we're still in the uh, summer months. We're still in vacation time for a lot of people, a lot of travel. And we pray those travels will be safe, that uh, we'll all look forward to once uh, school starts uh, this next month, that uh, we'll be coming back together and looking forward to having everyone together for all of our worship services and Bible studies. We ask always for forgiveness of our sins. We always ask for encouragement and strength. And when we need it, uh, please discipline us. Put us back on that path that we need to be on. Guide and protect us all. Continue to love us. Continue to have patience with us. Uh, we need your strength and we need your encouragement each and every day. These things we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.